Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. The list of armored animals that live on this planet and have ever lived on this planet is lengthy and populated with easily some of the coolest, crustiest, most impenetrable beasts to ever live. They come from every limb on the Tree of Life. We got mammals, we got dinosaurs, we got archosaurs, crocodilians, lizards, millipedes, crustaceans, the water skeletoned echinoderms, turtles, and all kinds of mollusks. None have ever had metal in their armor, at least as far as we know. That is, except for one teeny snail marooned on the bottom of the Indian Ocean, the scaly foot snail. And it may just be the most metal animal ever. Take one look at this ugly little porker and you'd probably mistake it for some ripe putrid scat. Except that somehow, you're on the bottom of the ocean nearly two miles below sea level. In other words, you won't be seeing such an ugly tiny creature. This is the scaly foot snail, or the scaly foot gastropod, or the sea penguin, or scientifically, a chrysomalone squamiferum. The thing has a lot of names. The scientific name comes from the roots chryso, for golden, and malone, for hair, with the species name meaning scale-bearing, the golden-haired, scale-bearing one. The golden hair part comes from the stuff inside their shells that make them the most metal animal ever, but we need to pace ourselves. These critters were first discovered in 2001, leaching off of hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the Indian Ocean at about 1.73 miles or 2,780 meters depth. They were given their scientific name in 2003, but it took till 2015 for it to get a formal scientific description published. They specifically live on black smoker hydrothermal vents in three known localities. One is the Kyre hydrothermal vent field near the Rodriguez Islands. Another is found in the Solitaire field. The third is the Longchi field. Kind of ironic that these totally wacky snails are known from areas of the ocean that happen to be near islands that also house a bunch of wacky animals. This is the one most people are familiar with, if you're familiar with these kinds of snails, that is. They are absolutely minuscule, being about an inch or two centimeters in height, length, diameter, etc. But come way smaller, too. Alright, so their shell is nothing special to look at. It's got three whorls, it's globose, and the outside ain't got much decoration beyond ribs and growth lines. Gimme them spiky boys, needle fellas, or the, um, <sighs> moving on. Then you got their squishy bits. They don't look much different than most sea snails, besides those scales. Invertebrate hard parts are called sclerites. The term has been applied to the scales on the foot of the scaly foot snail, but doesn't include the shell, which is technically an exoskeleton. The sclerites cover the sides of the snail's foot and are shaped like little horns. What makes this animal the most metal mollusk is, well, metal. Both its sclerite scales and its shell are reinforced by metal compounds. I'm not sure if people are confused when articles bring up animals that have metal in their skin or armor, but those critters don't literally have metal skin or metal armor. They have layers of their body that are partly mineralized with metallic ions. The rest of the body part, with the metal ions in it, are composed of the usual stuff. So that armor is a bit stronger than usual, but isn't impenetrable iron plating. For example, the extinct hell ants have metal particles in their jaws. But this doesn't mean they are composed of solid metal or have a layer of concentrated metal in them. Something I think needs to be pointed out, but I'm also not sure if the average reader of these kinds of articles or viewers of natural history content know that already, so eviscerate me in the comments. The snail's scales and shell have different layers. The outermost and thickest layer of the shell is made up of that iron sulfide calcium carbonate mix. Then there is an organic layer of stuff which is said to be equivalent to the periostracum of other shelled animals which is the outermost layer or skin of the shell. 
In these other animals, this layer is meant to protect the shell from corrosion. The innermost layer of the scaly foot snail's shell is made of the mineral aragonite, which is one of the forms of calcium carbonate. Each of these layers has a function. The middle organic layer helps to absorb shocks from attacks and helps to dissipate heat. The aragonite layer is for structural support, and the outer layer is to act as that metallic armor. The sclerites are composed of three layers too. One layer is the soft tissue core made of skin tissue. For a mollusk, that tissue is part of the outside wall of the mantle. The next layer is a conchiolin cover, which is a type of protein tissue used by many snails to make their shells or layers of their shells. The outermost layer of the sclerite is the one with the metallic ions. It contains iron and sulfur ions, together creating iron sulfides, which are better known as pyrite and gregite. This is why the critter got the name chrysomelone, meaning golden-haired, because pyrite is also better known as fool's gold. Make sure you've subscribed to see more natural history content like this. Hit the bell icon to keep yourself in the loop and leave a comment if you feel like it. There are only a few other groups of mollusks known to have scales, but the scaly foot snail is the only known gastropod, living or extinct, to have a suit of scales. Gastropods being the snails and slugs. Chitons are another group of slug-like mollusks that have a covering of overlapping scales down their back, but these are made of calcium carbonate and have no evolutionary connection to the roof-like scales of our snail friend. So why do these guys have the scales in the first place? It's one of those, we don't know for sure, but we got some ideas situations. One idea is that they help protect the soft and squishy bits on the inside, like the shell. Another idea is that it helps to detoxify their bodies as a way to safely remove and store any toxins they ingest as part of their lives on the sides of smoky black hydrothermal vents. The scales may benefit the snail by protecting the tender inner bits from the extremely hot vent fluid so that the bacteria colonizing the outside and inside of the snail's body may live close to the source of the chemical primordial soup needed for the process of turning it into energy. Yeah, there's some bacteria living on our friend's armor. Epsilon proteobacteria and delta proteobacteria have been found clinging to and thriving on the sclerite scales. They are hypothesized to possibly be the ones providing the snail with the mineralized metallic armor. If this hypothesis be true, then it works by the snail secreting organic compounds sticky body glue that help the bacteria attach to the sclerites, armor, and skin. That begs the question though, what do they eat if they have chemical eating, energy pooping bacteria clinging to their craggly skin? The answer is nothing. They don't eat. Well, they don't physically shove nummy bits into their mouth holes, nor cheese grate the radula against helpless victims. They get all the energy they need for doing snail things from the bacteria that live on them and in them. Evolving with a helpful bacterium in you for millions of years does something to you. In this case, it forced the snail to evolve a gland in the throat to house all those yummy bacteria. This gland is called the esophageal gland cause it's in the esophagus. The scaly foot snail's gland is way bigger than those of any other snails that have chemical munching bacteria. A cool thing about this gland is that the bacteria inside need oxygen. They need oxygen because they turn sulfur into sulfide by oxidizing it for energy and then poop out that sulfide. To do this, the snail has an extensive cardiovascular system, enough to make any caffeine addict explode. This cardiovascular system hitches up to an enormous heart that makes up 4% of the globular creature's body volume. Just for reference, our heart makes up about 0.003% of our body volume. The extensive blood pumping action of our snail friend is most likely to help oxygenate the bacteria in their gland. I mean, I doubt there's that much oxygen in there without it. And sure, those bacteria can probably switch to breathing without oxygen, but it's less efficient. 
That means these snails are extremely weird for yet another reason. They are symbiotrophs, getting all their energy from the symbiotic relationship with their colonies of bacteria, which also sort of makes them like secondary chemotrophs, animals that get their energy from chemicals rather than light or other organisms. It also means that the major evolutionary developments in this snail are the direct result of the symbiotic relationship. It's hypothesized that the adaptations are for housing the bacteria better and better over and above the needs of the snail. So who's really in control here? Remember the three localities where these snails are found? The snails differ from location to location. They are all still the same species, but the snails found that the solitaire vent field have a yellowish brown shell and cream colored sclerite scales. This change in color is because they don't have the same kind of iron sulfide components to their scales and shell. The ones from Kyrae are darker but more of a brown color than the dark lead colored ones from Longchi. The iron sulfide lacking snails were found to have stronger sclerites when it came to mechanical stress. That means the sclerites really might have nothing to do with defense from attacks. As metal and wacky as these creeping shelled slime balls of lead shavings are, that won't stop us from forcing them into extinction for our material gain. Yup, they're officially recognized as endangered. They have no protection under any laws and their habitat is threatened. Their potential habitat throughout the hydrothermal vent fields at the bottom of the Indian Ocean has been estimated at 67 acres. The problem here is that these communities in particular are passionately attached to one of the slowest spreading, slowest moving cracks in the ocean's crust on the planet. This crack being where a liquid mantle is coming up through the crack and the continents are pulling apart. The black smokers, no, 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 the other black smokers, uh, nope, uh, ah, yeah, these black smokers are formed a little ways from the ultra hot spreading plate crack. And that's where our snail friends live. Because this particular spreading ridge is so slow moving, the communities living there are more sensitive to and recover more slowly from any disruptions, natural or man-made. There aren't any natural disturbances going on right now, but guess what? The slow spreading cracks are epicenters for deposits of economically important minerals we need or want. Those areas are therefore prime targets for deep sea drilling. So far, the solitaire site is within the exclusive economic zone of Mauritius, meaning any mining rights belong to the state. They could get down to drilling, but haven't yet. The other two sites are unfortunately under the purview of the International Seabed Authority, that being an intergovernmental body controlling mineral-related activities on the seabed outside the limits of national jurisdiction. They sold the rights to mining in the other two hydrothermal vent fields to Germany and China, and they've been going to town. So now the snail's population in those areas have decreased enough to be listed as endangered as recently as 2019. Yikes and a half. I know they're kinda ugly as sin in a boring color, but they're damn cool and it'd suck for them to go extinct when they've survived for so long. So that's the scaly foot snail. We've learned that they have metallic scales and shells, have a huge heart, and eat the energy created by bacteria they keep in a sack in their throats. They're small little cinnamon rolls that deserve all the love and attention in the world. The 3D models in this video were made by Kuzim, or Adam Midzuk, and the animations were made by Tyler Addison. Their socials will be included in the description and the comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.